In this next video, we're going to talk about pressure in a gas or gas pressure. And so we're also going to deal with atmospheric pressure because in, in order to understand gas pressure, we also want to be able to reference it to the pressure in the atmosphere and where that came from. So first of all, pressure is one of the three variables that we're going to use to describe gases. Those three variables are pressure, volume, and temperature. And those three variables are called state variables. They explain the state of the gas. And in a future video, we'll go ahead and use the PV equals NRT equation, the ideal gas equation, to describe the relationship between those variables and how to use that in chemistry. But for now, it's sufficient to realize that it's simply one of the three ways in which we can determine the state of a gas, the pressure of a gas. So what causes the pressure in a gas? The pressure in gas is caused by molecules moving about very quickly because of their thermal agitation, because they're at a certain higher temperature, high enough to make them from a liquid into a gas. So they're flying through the container that they're in or in the atmosphere that we have here. And they're constantly bumping into each other. And that bumping action where molecules are hitting you and bumping off your face or off your skin or off the window or off, off the, uh, the walls or off the whiteboard, it causes a pressure. That pressure is caused by the change in momentum of the molecules. It's caused by the, what we would call the impulse, the force that they exert on the wall as they bounce back, and the force that they exert on each other when they collide with each other and bounce back. That's the pressure in the gas. So it's caused by the molecules bumping around and hitting into the walls of the cylinder or, or of the container that they're in. And so that caused the pressure in the gas. Now, turns out, the pressure in the atmosphere is there for the same reason, but another way of looking at it is simply this. Let's say here's the Earth, and we have a column of gas above the Earth. So imagine a square area on the surface of the Earth, and all the air above that square area would form a column in the atmosphere all the way out to space, and has a certain amount of height. The pressure that's caused by this atmosphere is equal to the force that is pushing down on the ground divided by the area on which it pushes. So let's say you take a square inch on the surface of the Earth and we have a column that is one square inch in cross-sectional area all the way out to space. What would be the force pushing down on that surface on the Earth? And of course, that force is equal to the mg, which is the weight of the air column. So whatever that column of air weighs, that's the weight by which it pushes down on the ground and that's the force by which it pushes on the ground. And that weight divided by the area can also be written as the density of the air times the volume times the acceleration due to gravity and essentially the pressure can be defined inside a gas column as the density times g times the height of the column. Now of course since in the atmosphere as you go higher and higher up up to space the density decreases so of course it's not quite as simple as this because the the uh, density doesn't decrease as you go up to space so it's in, in, it's in essence very similar to that but it's just there for a reference point. Ultimately, for us, it's good enough to know that the pressure caused by the atmosphere is equal to the weight of that column divided by the area. And if you actually go and measure that, it turns out a column of air that is one square inch in cross-sectional area from the, from the ground all the way out to the, to the edge of space has a weight of 14.7 pounds. And therefore, the pressure, the atmospheric pressure, is 14.7 pounds per square inch. Now, of course, we also have that expressed in different units. The different units came from different experiments that were done. For one, Torricelli, many hundreds of years ago, well, several, about 300 years ago, uh, came up with this interesting experiment. He took a small little beaker of mercury. Mercury, of course, is liquid on, at room temperature. It's also very, very dense. It has a density of 13.6 grams per cubic centimeter, which is 13.6 times the density of water. He then took a long glass tube and he filled it with mercury all the way to the very edge. He then put his finger on it, turned that tube around and stuck it upside down in that little bath of mercury. And then he allowed the mercury column to drop and it would drop at a certain point and stop. And of course, what's at the very top there is simply a vacuum. There's nothing up there, no atmosphere, no air, no nothing, just simply a vacuum. But this column of mercury would stop from going down any further. And he then measured the height of that column mercury. And when he did, it turned out that height of that column was 76 centimeters or 760 millimeters. That's about three quarters of a meter, or a little bit more than three quarters of a yard, about two and a half feet. And so again, he took the same 
concept is there, the pressure is equal to the force divided by the area. And so what he did here is that the pressure of the atmosphere pushing down on the mercury this way would be counteracted by the pressure caused inside the tube by this column of mercury. So the two pressures were equal and he was trying to figure out the pressure caused by this column of mercury. So he said that's equal to the force caused by this mercury divided by the cross-sectional area of the tube. The force, of course, the weight of the mercury, which is the mg, mass times acceleration of gravity is the weight, just like we did before. And then he said that the density of any material is equal to the mass divided by the volume. And from that, he was able to take that the mass is equal to the density times volume and took that and substituted it in for the mass here to get density times volume times g divided by area. And of course, the volume of the mercury in this tube is equal to the cross-sectional area times the height. So he put that in for volume. The cross-sectional errors cancel out. And again, he came up with the equation, just like we did over there, that the pressure caused by this mercury, just like the pressure caused by a gas, is equal to the density times acceleration to the gravity times the height. Since he knew the height because he was able to measure it, and he could figure out the acceleration to gravity, and he could figure out the density of that mercury, he was able to calculate the pressure, the atmospheric pressure. But we kind of reverse that now that we know what the atmospheric pressure is, which is in standard units, 101,325 newtons per square meters or pascals. So you put in the pressure in standard units, you put in the density of mercury in terms of kilograms per cubic meters, and you put in the acceleration to the gravity, 9.8 meters per second square, and you calculate that, and sure enough, you get a height of 760 millimeters, exactly what Torricelli uh, measured. And so now we talk about atmospheric pressure in terms of millimeters of mercury, how high a column of mercury it would support, converted to inches, that is 29.6 inches. And so now one atmosphere, that's the pressure caused by one atmosphere, is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury, or it's also now called 760 tors, of course, named after Torricelli, who figured that out. Also, we have another unit for pressure. We use this a lot in weather reporting. One bar is equal to 100,000 pascals. And since the atmospheric pressure is 101,325, so one atmosphere would be 1.013 bars or 1,013 millibars. So we talk about atmospheric pressure in terms of inches of mercury, millimeters of mercury, bars, or millibars. But anyway, those are all the different units. In chemistry, we probably will use this unit the most, which is 101,325 pascals or 101.3 kilopascals. And so we'll use that as a unit in here for pressure as one of the state variables that we'll use later on in our PV equals and our T equation. And of course, sometimes we also talk about pressure in terms of it being a single atmosphere. Not that often will we refer to it in terms of millimeters of mercury, but just to make sure we understand it, we'll throw a few example problems in there so that you'll know how to do that, and in case you run into that in your homework. So hopefully that gives you a nice little overview of what we mean with pressure in a gas, and later on we'll deal a little bit more about it when we talk about the three state variables, but at least you have now an understanding of uh, atmospheric pressure and how we can measure that in terms of millimeters of mercury. One little interesting concept is, what if we replaced the mercury with water? Could we do that very same experiment? And the answer is yes. But then you need a much longer tube because the density of water is not nearly as much as the density of mercury. Matter of fact, since water is only 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, you would need a tube 13.6 times as long, and you could do that very same experiment with water. You can see why Torricelli chose mercury instead of water. All right, that is the interesting introduction on gas pressure.